So this is Memex. Memex is a hyper in-depth bookmarking tool. It's privacy focused and aims to be the organizer for your searches. In today's video, we explore Memex a little bit more, chat with Oliver Sorter, one of their founders, and give you all you need to know about this fairly new Chrome extension and tool for capturing all of your thoughts and searches on the web. So today's video is sponsored by Pipedrive. I'll share a little bit more about Pipedrive a little later in this video. So Memex is a tool that can be downloaded on Chrome. It can also be downloaded on Firefox as well as a extension. Um, and it's fairly easy to get set up. Uh, you go through a little bit of a setup process um, that gives you um, how you want to set it up inside of your day-to-day -day use. So once you're all set up, you'll see a layout a little bit like this. And I will showcase some of the features before we dive into how the product works. So as you can see by this central column, it's beginning to track all of my history of web searches. Now that's one of the features, a full text and web history, so that you can search for specific sites that you may have been on. You can even filter this down a little bit more to be very specific about the domains, the tags, and the dates, and whether they've been hearted in your system. Now the second and I would say coolest feature is probably the annotation abilities. So if you're inside of an article, you can choose to select a piece of work or a bit of text, and you can either highlight it, which creates a highlight on the page, and that will appear next time you are inside of that page, or you can annotate it, allowing you to add a few private notes to a specific lesson that it may have been in there. Say you're reading an article, that could be quite useful. So as you can see here, this is the annotation ability. And from here, it pops out as a little sidebar on your Chrome browser. Now you can choose to see all of your notes that you've taken for the day, or you can see ones that you've taken for specific pages, uh, and you can choose those just up here. And you can even visit all of the pages you've been on across the day. Now, once you are able to add annotation, you can also add a tag and also favorite it if you wish. And over here, you can also bookmark the page, add notes to page, add tags to page, add pages to something called a collection, and also access more settings here. You can even search anything you've previously accessed in your Memex too. So if you wanted to view the notes you've taken, you can go and find them associated to the page, which is very helpful. So you can start collecting useful things that have been sprouted inside of the pages. It works a little bit like how Medium's highlighter or annotation works in their application. Now, a few notes on the terms of the data stuff, because I was actually a little bit worried, like, you know, full text history search, you know, what are they going to be doing with the data and how are they going to be accessing it? So apparently all data is stored offline first and synced with end to end encryption. And apparently Memex is funded without venture capital investments. They also state that Memex only shares error logs and anomalous usage statistics, and it never shares the content you save or search. I actually originally found this when I saw that Tiago Forte had Oliver Sorter over on his channel. You can check out their full interview below, but here's how Oliver describes what Memex is. Yeah, so Memex is a browser extension that should help you to ease your information overload when doing online research. And doing so on two levels. Uh, one is when you need to organize incoming information or things you read online, you have maybe run into these issues of um, having hundreds of bookmarking folders that you save stuff, but you never really be able to surface stuff again, or tabs that are open um, for weeks because you don't want to lose stuff. Um, and what you can do with Memex is you can, instead of needing to organize anything, uh, it automatically indexes every website that you visit, and then you can full text search it, meaning you can search with these vague memories that you have about it. And we gradually will expand those memory um, parameters um, by, for example, things like, hey, did I share or like it on social media? Um, did I annotate it, etc." And so you, this is how you remember things. And so it's basically an uh, idea of work, thoughts, and, and connected, uh, connected thought into 
uh, bookmarking tool. That's, so that's feature number one. The second way it improves your ability to um, cope with information overload right now is um, this issue that you maybe have when you need to remember certain segments of a particular piece that you read, you have to copy paste like text and your notes to another app that you use, maybe your own mission, et cetera. And with Memex, you can annotate. So you can highlight and add notes directly in the browser and bring them over then into your favorite applications that you use. So yeah, that, that's what Memex does right now. It's um, an offline first product. So all of the data is locally stored. Um, we care a lot for your pre. And we have also a mobile app. Um, the sync between mobile app and the browser extension is end-to-end -end encrypted. Um, and all of that is open source. So um, you can remix uh, and re-funky like, stuff <laughs> um, and bring it into the, to your own workflows eventually. Um, very important under the hood is a technology we have now in kind of a, an alpha mode, which is Storex Hub which is essentially a Zapier, an offline-first Zapier that also stores all the process data locally. Mm -hmm. Meaning what you can do with that is then suddenly um, you can integrate Memex, but also any other tool much more into your own workflow by saying, for example, hey, I want to um, use all the links that I saved um, in Memex about COVID and I want to create a public collection in my Notion yeah. Uh, or I want to put it in my in my room, etc. And the idea is here that we want that we are aware that everyone has uh, different knowledge workflows, and there will never be a single tool that can cater for this huge long tail of uh, different workflows that are existent. And so, what we rather optimize for is interoperability, meaning that you over time can adapt your own workflows much better, um, and the tools can adapt with you. Um, mm -hmm. by having full control in a local environment on how you connect your workflows with other applications. So over on this side, you can go ahead and create collections. Inside of collections, you can give them a list name. In this case, I could say articles read. If you actually download the mobile edition, you'll need the pro account to actually get the sync which connects your accounts up. A little bit how Bear works, you need to pay the premium, enable for the applications to sync together. If you go to articles read, you can filter out certain items. So if I went back to this area here and I decided to add it to a collections, for example, articles read, I can then go over to articles read and it's essentially a foldering system here. So if I wanted to find any bookmarked items, I could actually go to this heart and find it fairly quickly. So inside of settings, there's a little bit more in terms of the annotations and also some of the custom abilities. But before we check that out, here's a little bit more about Pipedrive, which is our sponsor for this month here on Keep Productive. Are you in a sales team? Do you manage sales leads? Are you in charge of the sales pipeline? If the answer is yes, then you'll need to know about Pipedrive. Managing leads, keeping track of communications and managing processes can be overwhelming. Pipedrives make sales simpler with a host of features to help you stay on top of all the new leads and conversations. Let's hone in on a feature. Pipedrive's lead booster feature is a customizable chatbot that you can add to any page of your website. Lead Booster will engage visitors to your site and send qualified leads direct to the right person in your sales team. Now, 90,000 companies use Pipedrive and deals worth a combined total of over 24 billion have been closed on the CRM software. It's one of the best sales tools for managing incoming leads out there. I used Pipedrive at a previous company I worked with and it was super easy to get on with. There's plenty of ways you can optimize it even further. There was a chap at our work who dug really deep, setting up some fantastic workflows and educating me in the process. Now Pipedrive aims to be your one-stop sales hub. You can learn more about Pipedrive in the description below and start winning deals for you and your team in this easy to use hub. You can go to pipedrive.com slash keep productive to find out more about Pipedrive. 
So this is the settings area and you can see here you can create some of the keyboard shortcuts. So if you wanted to be able to quickly highlight selected text or open the sidebar, you could use Shift R, uh, which is very easy to do, as well as Shift A to create an annotation. But you can switch them on or off and even enable them to get started. So they were automatically switched off uh, if you are starting up your account. Now, one of the things to note about account creation, you don't actually have to create a brand new account. You don't even actually have to have an account. Um, but if you want to have that sync that will be set up after, you can sign in and uh, you can also get manual backups and syncing as well. We'll go through how that works in the pricing though. So as you can see here, you can show Memex search that will be a little bit like how you would, for example, search in uh, like Evernote. So for example, if you search something using the Evernote search, it will appear on that right hand side and Memex search will do the same thing. It doesn't mean it will search or show it to other people. It just means that it's easy access when you're trying to find things you've already clipped. So you can make a few indexing preferences as well. But as you can imagine, you can set them up as you're actually setting up your Memex account. So one thing that is cool is you can actually um, import from other applications. Um, so for example, if you've got Pocket um, and other browser bookmarking services, for example, the likes of Digo, Raindrop, um, apparently they're able to import. You can import HTML files, but you can also import all of your browser history. But apparently that's gonna take about an hour if I wanted to do that. So from here, I can also back up my data. I can connect to a cloud provider and you can start the wizard to connect it to, for example, Google Drive or a, for example, local hard storage. Um, that could be Dropbox, Spike Rope and, uh, and the G Drive if you wanted to. So anything automatically backs up there. There are some beta features, but do note that the application on mobile is in beta. You can also have a block list for sites as well. For example, um, you can have certain sites that you don't want to be consistently tracked or visited or even indexed, then you can have that be blocked there. You can also see how their privacy works as well. It seems to be like their privacy is a core focus of the company. After speaking with um, Oliver, it seemed that the, their focus was making sure that your data is secure. If you wanted, there's also a tutorial here that is actually available through Notion. So one of the things that when I was chatting with Oliver, he shared his vision for the company um, was to actually sort of improve web research a little bit more. Um, and I found it quite interesting because he talked about this concept that connecting people up with um, the, the Memex. So for example, you can add friends or add people you know um, and it would basically give you um, background information, um, helpful for fact checking on sites, allow people to comment and annotate. So you've got, uh, you know, the ability to, you know, like highlight things and see what the article is about. Maybe people can make some comments and even quality ratings for websites and content based stuff on their interactions with them. There's also the intent to add social search as well. So for example, you can filter uh, what you and your or groups are actually uh, clipping as they go across the web. But as you can imagine, this is all um, meant to be for the public side of it versus the private side, which is all of the stuff that's already available. And that stuff not available right now, but it's planning to be in the future. But in terms of the pricing, there's a free model which gives you unlimited full text history search, unlimited annotations, unlimited collection and tags, uh, access to the mobile app, iOS and Android, although you won't get the syncing, um, and also unlimited manual backups. In the pro plan, which is uh, three euros per month, I believe that's gonna be the same price in the US, but I'll double check. That includes everything in the basic automatic backups and end-to-end -end encryptions between your mobile phone. So they've also got end-to-end -end encryption sync between your mobile phone, so it actually connects up that mobile phone access. But you get a 40 day free trial, and I think that's a pretty decent free plan, especially for a company so focused on privacy. Now, if you want my opinion, I think this is a really nice looking application. I'm gonna play around with it for a couple of weeks. Um, I really like how you can clip um, uh, little pieces uh, as you find them across the web and maybe learnings that you come across. Um, and it could be quite useful because recently I've not been reading as many articles as I should be. And I would really like to be able to clip some learnings from them 
and uh, be able to have a sort of place I can come back to um, to be a bit more specific. Obviously, there are other tools um, like Pocket and things like that, but I quite like the way that the annotation ability works on this um, and the fact that you've got that sidebar that pops up too. Um, it seems really intuitive. Um, maybe I haven't checked in on what Pocket looks like for a fair while, but I definitely think this is something that looks very nice. So folks, I'll include all the links in the description below, but I hope you find this uh, video useful. Hope it was uh, a nice overview of Memex. Um, let me know your thoughts on Memex. Have you tried it? Have you been playing around with it? Let us know in the comments below. So folks, a big thank you, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio. It's really interesting. It's sort of, is it like that, is the best way to describe it, is that like Memex sort of the middleman um, with these yep. tools? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we're, we're trying to build this kind of connector glue in between yeah. um, and particularly focus on the step where you want to process um, information that you see online. Where do you see you guys in the next six months to a year's time in terms of features mm -hmm. and where, mm -hmm. you, where would you like to be as well? Yeah. So the larger vision of this project is how do we help you cope with information overload. Um, we have quite decently solved it on the personal organization level, but what's definitely missing is how do you vet and evaluate incoming information? Yeah. So when you read something, like how do you make sure this is actually qualitative? Um, how do you understand context around it so you can process many more topics much more deeply and with more perspectives? Yeah. Uh, so you're not as overloaded as you are right now when you are on social media, etc. And the next phase of our project is, has two angles. One is sharing and collaboration, meaning that I can start sharing the research that I accumulate and make it accessible to others so that vice, on the, vice versa, I can access um, the knowledge of other people much more easily um, so I can make faster and more like in deeper online research about topics that I might not know that much about. And the second part is integrations. So uh, we want to be much more integrated into the workflows um, of other applications where um, we are aware that Memex is this like binding element in between and we're like we're seeing the kind of our the workflow pipeline in which Memex serves is that we have synthesis tools like Hypothesis, uh, sorry, uh, like Notion or like Roam. Um, that are really there for um, creating knowledge and structuring like brain work. Um, and we're positioning ourselves in the part that helps to feed new information into that process and specifically web-based information.